Hi everyone, thank you for seeing my presentation. My name is Jaskaran. I'm a PhD student in the Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon. This presentation is on my paper called Why Does Symmetry Cause Deadlocks? So this is the outline of this presentation. We will revisit this slide every now and then just to remind ourselves where we are. So what is the motivation of our work? Multi-robot systems have been used for many tasks, such as search and rescue, exploration and coverage. Generally, the controllers on these robots are a combination of a task-based control and a collision avoidance mechanism. But this combination can prevent satisfaction of the original task due to constraints. Robots may stop moving to maintain safety, resulting in deadlocks, as has been noted in these works. So we wanted to formally investigate why do deadlocks occur, and this paper is an attempt to answer that question. I want to acknowledge that our analysis is based on the safe control algorithm developed by these authors. So the main contributions of our work are as follows. Firstly, we provide a mechanism to analyze long-term behavior of reactive optimization-based controllers. We focus on control barrier function-based quadratic programs, which have been very successful in ensuring safety for UAVs and legged robots. We demonstrate that when these controllers are used for collision avoidance and goal stabilization in multi-robot systems, they may cause deadlocks. Specifically, we show that it is the geometric symmetries in the initial positions and goals that cause CBFQPs to generate controls in directions that render deadlocks stable, hence the title of the paper. All right, so let us now review some terminology from avoidance control and goal stabilization. So let's see the setup. We have n robots in the plane. Let's just focus on one ego robot, that is robot i. The problem is to find a control ui to make i reach its goal pdi while avoiding collisions with every other robot. We assume that all these robots are velocity controlled, so they follow single integrated dynamics. We also assume that there is a user prescribed nominal control for each robot, which is simply a proportional controller. Now this control by itself guarantees exponential stabilization of each robot to its goal, but it does not guarantee that the resulting motions of the robots will be collision free. So how do we pose that requirement? We need that the distance between any two robots be at least d sub s, where d sub s is a desired safety margin. So we pose a pairwise safety index for robots i and j called h sub i j, and i and j are safe if and only if h sub i j is non-negative. h sub i j is known as the control barrier function, that is a CBF. So as I said earlier, for i and j to be collision free, we require that h sub i j to be non-negative. To ensure that it continues to be non-negative, we enforce this condition on the derivative of the safety index h sub i j. Ultimately, this condition gives us constraints on the controls of robots i and j respectively. And if the controllers of these robots satisfy this constraint, that will ensure that subsequent motions of the robots are collision free. So we already had a nominal control for reaching a goal, and now we have a constraint to ensure safety. So how do we mediate between the two? The way to do that is to pose a quadratic program which minimizes the deviation from the prescribed nominal control UI cab subject to the safety constraint. So in the multi-robot system, each robot I will locally solve this QP for its optimal control UI star, which will ensure collision avoidance while creating as much motion towards the goal as possible. So going forward, this is what will be referred to as the CBF QP. Let's see now what information we can derive about this optimal control UI star to see why this control is a bad choice under symmetric circumstances. In other words, it is this control which will cause deadlocks. Let's see how and why. So to do that analysis, we will investigate the KKT conditions of the CBFQP. Since the CBFQP is an optimization problem, we can infer properties of its solution UI star by looking at the KKT conditions of this optimization. Why are we doing this? Well, we want to infer long-term properties of robot motion, but the control is computed at every time step through an optimization. The KKT conditions will give us an analytical expression for control to help us with this long-term analysis. So what are these conditions? Well, there are four. There's stationarity, which comes from setting the gradient of Lagrangian equal to zero. There's primal feasibility, which is simply the feasibility of the constraints of the QP. 
then there's dual feasibility and complementary slackness. Hermius Abijay are the Lagrange multipliers for the inequality constraints. So given these conditions, we can define the set of active and inactive constraints as follows. The set of active constraints is a set of all those indices, or robots in our case, for which the constraint is active, that is, equality holds. Likewise, the set of inactive constraints is those indices for which strict inequality holds. From complementary slackness, we know that Lagrange multipliers will be zero for all inactive constraints, and that, together with stationarity, gives us the following expression for control as we want it. Note here that the summation of J is restricted to the set of active constraints instead of all other robots in the system. All right, now that we've looked at the analytical expression for optimal control UI star, we're ready to see how that control causes deadlock. So what is deadlock? Well, the definition is as follows. We say that a robot I is in deadlock if the optimal control UI star is zero, but the nominal control UI cap is not zero. Recalling from our definition of UI cap, we know that it is non-zero only when the robot is not at its goal. So let's deconstruct this definition now. UI star equal to zero means that the QP is outputting zero, so the robot is static. UI cap not equals to zero means that robot should continue moving because it is not at its goal, but the QP says no. Why does that conflict occur? Well, that is to prevent collisions. In other words, if the QP is commanding the robots to stop, that's because any movement will cause them to collide. Let's see that more closely for some simple systems. Okay, so now we will focus on the simple case of two robots. The main result is that if two robots and their goals are situated as shown in this picture, then the controls resulting from CBFQP will cause them to fall in deadlock. This video demonstrates exactly the same. Let's now look at some formal analysis for this video. So the analysis for the motion of these two robots can be broken down into several sequential phases, which depend on whether the collision avoidance constraint of each robot is active or not. In the following discussion, when I say that a robot is worried about collision, it means that the corresponding collision avoidance constraint is active. So when the robots start at t equals to zero, they're far away from one another, so they are both not worried about collisions at this time. This constitutes phase zero. Then until time t1, they both continue to be not worried about collisions. This constitutes phase one. Subsequently, robot one starts to worry while robot two is still moving as though there were no incoming robot. This constitutes phase two. Eventually, both robots enter the worry zone which results in them falling in deadlock. So just to recall, at any time, the control input for, it, for robot I is obtained from this optimization. For the two robot case, each robot only must avoid collisions with the other robot. So there's just one constraint per eager robot. Now, if it so happens that the prescribed nominal control UI cap satisfies this constraint itself, then it is evident that the optimal solution is UI cap itself, right? That's because the optimal value of the objective in that case will be zero, and UI cap would satisfy the constraint. So the solution will be UI cap. Now, as we show in the paper, it turns out that UI cap satisfies this constraint if and only if the distance between the robots is greater than a certain critical distance called beta i. Each robot i has its unique distance beta i because the gains of proportional controller as well as the initial distance of i to its goal is unique. So let's look at phase zero in more detail. At t equals to zero, if the initial distance between the robots, that is d of zero, which is shown in the dark green dot in this graph, is greater than the critical distance of robot one, shown in blue, then u1 star of zero will simply be u1 cap of zero. Similarly for robot two, if d of zero is greater than beta two, that is shown in mustard, then u2 star will be u2 cap. So when I said earlier that robots are not worried, I meant that they can use their prescribed nominal control, pretending as though there wasn't another robot around. So now we can assume that this pattern continues for some time, that is d remains greater than both beta one and beta two, right? The curve of d is above the curve of beta one and beta two in this graph. 
Therefore, the robots continue to use their nominal controllers. However, eventually, at time t1, d of t becomes equal to beta 1 of t. And that's because robot 1 had a higher proportional gain than robot 2. So what happens is that the constraint of robot 1 becomes active, and u1 gap ceases to be feasible. This marks the beginning of phase 2. So now that robot 1's constraint has become active, it can no longer use u1 gap. Meanwhile, robot 2 continues to move as though there was no robot around it, right? Its constraint is still inactive. Nevertheless, eventually, there comes a time t2 when d of t crosses beta 2 of t, and so robot 2's constraint also becomes active. And now robot 2 also enters the worry zone like robot 1. Notice in the graph that at t equals to t2, the Lagrange multiplier of robot 2 switches on. This marks the beginning of phase 3. Finally, we enter phase 3, where the constraint of each robot is active. We show in this paper that in this phase, the distance between robots exponentially converges to the safety margin d sub s, and because of that, the controls for each robot also converge to zero, which means that robots come to a stop and hence have fallen in debt. So this concludes the proof for the two robot system. Now let's look at the three robot system. So the main result is as follows. Given symmetric initial conditions and goals, as shown in this picture, the controls resulting from CBFQP result in deadlocks, as this animation shows. So unlike the two robot case, here we assume that all robots have identical proportional gains. And this video demonstrates how deadlock occurs. So let's see the proof. The proof can be divided into several sequential phases. When robots start at t equals to zero, they're far away from one another, so all of them are not worried about collisions at this time. This constitutes phase zero. Then for a finite duration until t1, they all continue to be not worried about collisions. This constitutes phase one. And subsequently, all robots simultaneously begin to worry and eventually fall in deadlock. This constitutes phase two. So now let's look at phase zero. In the three robot case, each robot has two collision avoidance constraints corresponding to its two neighbors. Now because of the geometric symmetry that we assumed, if any robot's nominal control is feasible, then all robots' nominal controls are also feasible. And like the two robot case, Feasibility of nominal control is equivalent to the inter-robot distance being greater than a certain critical distance. So we assume that at t equals to zero, the distance between robots is more than the critical distance, so that the optimal control for each robot is its nominal control itself. Again, we can assume that this pattern continues for a finite time, that is, the inter-robot distance d of t, that is the dark green curve, remains greater than the critical distance beta, that is the blue curve, so that all robots continue to use their nominal controllers, u of gaps. But eventually, at time t1, d of t becomes equal to beta of t. That's when the collision avoidance constraints of all robots become active. Now, the interesting thing is that this happens simultaneously for all robots, and that's because of the geometric symmetry and identical proportional gains that we assume. This marks the beginning of phase two. Finally, robots enter phase three, where all constraints of each robot are active. The distance between robots exponentially converges to the safety margin d sub s, and the optimal controls converge to zero, which means that the robots come to a stop and hence have fallen in deadlock. With this, we have concluded the proof for the three robot case. All right, so let's see the summary of our work now. So in this paper, we analyzed long-term behavior of reactive optimization-based controllers using duality theory, and we demonstrated that it is the geometric symmetry in initial positions and goals that constrains CBS to generate velocities that render deadlock stable. 
In future, we plan to extend this analysis to n robot systems and consider symmetric and asymmetric configurations to reveal general scenarios that are prone to deadlock. We also plan to extend this analysis to other reactive control synthesis methods like velocity obstacles. And with that, I'd like to thank you for listening to my presentation. Please reach out to me for any questions, and the codes for the simulations and proofs are available on this link. Thank you.